Welcome to Fitness Training Solutions, the Anatomy Series, Part 2. So, <coughs> welcome to Fitness Training Solutions, Anatomy Series, Part 2. So, what are we going to talk about today? We're looking at the structure and function of the skeleton. So, what are the learning outcomes? Today, we would hopefully get a really good grasp of the functions of the skeleton. You should be able to identify structures such as the axle and appendicular skeleton. Learn and explain the classifications of bone, the structure of long bone, and the stages of bone growth. You should be also be able to describe postures in terms of the curvatures of the spine, such as neutral spine, and the motion of the spine. Looking at posture deviations, such as kyphosis, lordosis, and scoliosis. So let's move on. The skeletal system has a main framework, and in front of you you can see post-its. Now these post-its should be little key things that are gonna help you with your exams. So that's the most important thing. Writing down little notes, trigger words that are gonna help you, such as there are 206 bones in the body. They all have different shapes and sizes. The femur is the thigh bone. The humerus is the funny bone. Cartilage is at the end of the bone. And think of those Latin names, the ones like we spoke about within the heart in part one. So let's look at the structure of the skeleton. There's types of connective tissue you need to remember. So we've got the cartilage. Cartilage, you've got haline cartilage, which we found in joints. Fibrocartilage, which can be found in the spinal discs. And elastic, which would be like in the ears. Now with the bones, it's really important to make sure that you understand they meet to bone form joints. So you have ligaments. Ligaments are connective bone to bone to provide stability. So they help connect the bones. And then tendons attach muscles to bone to transfer forces that are exerted on the skeleton. So what about the functions of the skeleton? Well, the functions of the skeleton are to provide a bony framework, to protect vital organs, to provide services for muscle attachments. They produce red and white blood cells, and they store minerals such as calcium. The last thing they do is provide levers for muscle movement, so such as arms and legs. Now, just a quick Q&A. I'd like you to send these to us at info at fitnesstrainingsolutions.co.uk with your answers to see if you got these right. So the skeleton. The rib cage protects the, the cranium and skull protects the, the vertebral column protects the, and the pelvis protects the. Now pause this if you can want to. Take a note and send them to us online and we can see if you've got the right answers. So, bones of the skeleton, what are we looking at? So we've got the shoulder girdle, as you can see, at the top. We've got the arms, the hands, the pelvic girdle, and the legs and feet, or the foot. So, when we're looking at the axle, the axle of the skeleton is the skull, the rib cage, and the spine. The appendicular are the limbs, and the anchoring bones, highlighted in pink, as you can see. So, bones are classified according to their shape. Look at the diagram of the skeleton. What different shapes do you see? Make a note, pause this section now, and then come back to me. Okay, welcome back. So, bone classification. Classified bone shapes are not, are not size. So you've got long, short, flat, irregular, and sesamoid. All these words you're going to need to know for your medicine physiology exam. And it's really important to understand what they are and where they are. So what, class what classifications and type of bone is there? So you've got the spine and the vertebrae, the tibula, the carpals, the phalanges, the scapula, and the kneecap. Again, I want you to jot your answers down. Pause this now. 
and you're going to email them to me. Okay, so look at the structure of the long bone. So the structure of the long bone, as you can see, you've got the epiphysis, which is the end of the bone, and the diaphysis, which is that long shaft that goes all the way through the middle. You've got peristernum that runs around the outside. And as you can see, it's broken down into various pieces. So both bone formation. When we look at bone formation, this is known as ossification. So can you remember what ossification is? Again, you can pause this right now, or you can find out next. So, living tissue with own blood supply. Osteoblasts build new bone tissue, and then the osteoclasts clear away old or damaged bone tissue. Factors affecting bone formation would be a poor nutrition or diet, exposure to sunlight, hormonal secretion affecting calcium levels, and physical activity and exercise. The posture of the spine. Growth and development of neutral spine. So within the spine, you should know that it's broken down into several sections. You've got at the top, the cervical, which comprises seven cervical vertebrae. You've got the thoracic, which is 12 thoracic vertebrae. You've got the lumbar, which is five, the sacrum, which is five, and then the coccyx, which is four. There should be four natural curves, two curves or hollow, and two convex or rounded. So as you can see, these are the types of curvatures of the spine that you may see with clients or with anyone that you associate yourself with. So you've got normal curvature of the spine, you've got hyperlordosis, which you can see is the lower part of the spine and then you've got hyperkyphosis which is the upper part of the spine and then scoliosis which is like an S shape so just a little full storm why is it important for fitness instructors to have an understanding of the skeleton so why is that so important pause think of your answers and come back to me so Hopefully you've come up with some answers. So again, why is it important for fitness instructors to have an understanding of the skeleton? Well, posture and alignment during exercise is fundamentally so important. You need to make sure your client is moving in the correct way. It's not going to injure them. Types of exercises to improve bone density. The effects of exercise on the health of the skeleton. So this section was a brief outline, which would hopefully have helped you describe the functions of the skeleton, identify the structures of the axle and appendicular skeleton, looked at the classifications of bones. Now with those classifications of bones, different types of bones, I want you to go to your manual and have a look in more detail about each specific, uh, specific one so that you understand fundamentally why they're in that shape and what bones are in that classification. You should be able to explain the structure of a long bone. And again, there's more details in your manuals. The stages of bone growth, and then the different postural terms and curvatures of the spine. Thank you for this recap on your level two for the skeleton system. So working through the skeletal system and moving on to chapter three next time. So speak to you soon.